Hello everybody. So today I'm going to show you a really great way to not only implement self-service for your clients when they're signing documents, but to gather mass e-signatures in a way that's really convenient for you and your recipients. So we're going to cover online forms and we have a sample form on our web page that you can go to and we'll go through that as well. So first you'll need a template on your account. So maybe an application form or intake form, um, some generic form that uh, really just need the recipient information first and they can fill out the rest. So I'm just gonna check mark my template and create online form. And we'll just do a quick overview of all the different settings um, that you can customize on here. So you can use multiple templates or multiple documents for your online form. We're just going to um, change the form name here so it's different from the template. And you can see we can change the author, we can set an expiration date, or a max number of envelopes. So maybe if you have a survey type form and you wanna max it out at 100 different recipients or envelopes, you can do that here too. In our display features, there's a couple different options you can do. So with this online form, we can embed it um, either on your application or website, uh, or you can just use it as a direct link. So in preview mode, basically what this is saying is if you wanna show a preview of that form in the background, that's something you can do with this setting. If not, it's just going to show the fields that need to be filled in and um, any instructions and your logo here. We're gonna continue. So for security, I do wanna say that uh, Foxy eSign is HIPAA, FINRA, 21 CFR Part 11 and SOC 2 Type 2 compliant. So we offer a lot of different verification options like knowledge-based authentication uh, with our enterprise plan. And we also have this user-defined access code. So if you wanna customize a password to actually access this online form, that is something you can do with uh, this authentication level here. But we're just gonna leave at no authentication. Um, this is where you'll assign recipients or signers. So you can either have open roles such as this one. Um, number one will always be the initiator or whoever's opening this online form first. And then if you do wanna have multiple parties, you can either have dynamic um, or fixed and static parties. Here we can um, customize the instructions for the online form. You'll see what that looks like and the success message at the end. So I'm just going to submit and all we need here is either the distribution link or embed link for our website or application if you wanna embed it in an iframe. Um, what I really like about the distribution link is that you can bookmark this on your tabs in your browser or if you want to save this on your notes on your phone, you can set it in a text message right away so it's super easy and convenient. Um, but what I want to show you is if we took this embed code here, what it would look like um, on your website in an iframe. So you can visit this link as well and try it out for yourself. We're just going to go through what it looks like actually embedded on the website and some different fields and options that we have. So you'll see the logo at the top here. Oops, you'll see the logo at the top here. Um, you can customize the title and the instructions as well. So all you need from the client is first name, last name, and email. And if you do want them to enter in an email address twice, that's something you can do too. Um, just to make sure there's no misspellings or anything. So I'll submit this. And you'll see it's embedded on this page. Um, these instructions I've customized uh, for the account overall. So this is whenever anyone opens a document, whether it's through online form or email, um, these are the customized instructions. So we'll accept. And you can try out a bunch of different fields we have with this interactive form here. So we do have checkboxes and they can either be grouped together um, or select multiple checkboxes in that group so you can do one or more. So we'll see, we can check multiple. 
or either or. We do have drop down fields that can be customized. Um, these can be added as personalized fields on your account. So if you do want to, you know, make this state list drop down just once and then be able to drag and drop it over on your documents, maybe it's a different template or different document, um, you can definitely make sure this is saved on your account. So I'm just going to pick one here. So text fields, um, we do have an option where, uh, let's say you're asking for a phone number or you're asking for an address multiple times on a document. Really, it's convenient just to type it in once and have it populate in other places. So as long as we name the field the exact same thing uh, throughout that document, it will auto-populate. So let's just put this here and you'll see it's populating these other text fields. So conditional logic, we can make a field dependent on another. So especially if you are asking for a payment method, whether it's by card or bank account, um, whatever it is, you can have someone select a checkbox and the field will uh, pop up depending on if they've selected this checkbox or not. We do have attachment fields, so you can upload images. So if you need driver's license, um, any certificates, things like that, definitely use this to upload those. Same with our image field. And mandatory fields, so basically you'll see that I cannot complete this document or execute it without fully completing any mandatory fields um, on this document. So mandatory fields will always be outlined in red. And with our hyperlink, if you want to um, redirect anyone to a website from the document, they can click the link and it will open a new tab for them. So auto-populated fields, this is something we have for the first and last name of a signer, their email, and the date that they've opened up the document. So you'll see my first and last names already here, email, and then this will always be not the day that they finish or sign the document, but the day they've actually first had activity on that document. So draft mode is something we have um, basically whenever you upload your files before you're sending out a document or if you need to make an edit to a template for a specific recipient or group of recipients, that's what we call draft mode. So this text has already been added or pre-filled during draft mode and we have view only text fields that cannot be changed by the recipient um, that you can add here. So if you need to make quick edits or add uh, text that you know shouldn't be changed by the recipient on your contracts you can do this with the view only fields we do also have our accept and decline button so if any recipient declines um, signing the document it will cancel the document for all the recipients in that group um, but we're just going to accept here Validations. So if you would like a text field to only accept numbers or letters, for example, um, that is something we offer. So if I try to type in numbers here, you'll see that I cannot enter in any numbers. So I can only enter in text. And same here, if I only try to enter in letters here, it won't work. I can only enter in numbers. And we do have a phone number format. We have multiple, so you can select which one you'd like to use. But if I just start typing, it will automatically format this into that desired phone number format. We also can create a character limit on text fields. So if I try to type more than three, either letters or numbers, whatever it is, it's not going to work here. 
So our secured fields are really great if you're taking in sensitive information such as social security numbers, any credit card numbers, driver's license. Um, only users with secured field access on your account will be able to see the value um, behind the secured field. So whatever I type in here, um, this will be actually masked with X's after it's been executed. So if you are emailing back um, the actual PDF to the recipient and an attachment, it's not going to show up on there. It can only be accessed from someone on the account who has secured field access. And again, if you are taking in credit card numbers and you want to add just four numbers to show up at the end, the rest of them in the beginning will be masked and X'd out. So now it's time to sign here, and we can allow either typing, drawing, or uploading an image of um, the client's actual signature. So we have different font styles you can choose from as well, and we can just draw our signature too, change the ink color if we want. There's a lot of different options for customizing. Um, and also on your account, if you only want your recipient to just draw or just type their signature, that's definitely something you, control, you can control as well. So we'll sign this, and it's same thing with initial fields. We can just draw it. And now you'll see we can finish the document at the top right. And what's really great about the online form is we have this redirect setting. So it's going to redirect us to a different website, um, whatever URL that we decide to put. But what we have here, you'll see it took me back to the beginning. Um, that's kind of a hidden feature we have called kiosk mode. So if you want to put your online form on a tablet in your office and cycle through that form, so maybe the first patient or client signs their form and fills that out, then next patient's ready to go right after, that's something you could do with our kiosk mode. All right, so that is our online forms. Uh, feel free to access this webpage as well and try it out for yourself. Thank you.